Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. So today we're going to be talking about this tank again, but this is a request from a few people actually to talk about the filtration in this tank. So it's a sump, freshwater sump. A lot of people think that the sump is reserved for the marine side of the hobby rather than the freshwater, but it's perfectly acceptable and perfectly uh, reasonable to think about sumps when you've got larger tanks to filter. And I'd even go as far as to say is any tanks, if you can fit a sump on it, it's always a good idea to do that. I have a sump running on this tank, it all sits down here, and we'll show you that in a minute. Running a sump on any tank has loads of benefits, so you can think about it from things like increasing the water volume of your system, um, to having somewhere to hide equipment like heaters and uh, CO2 systems and all that kind of stuff, and somewhere that's good to dilute things. So if you're adding fertilizers or medications, if you add them to the sump, they're getting diluted a bit before they get put back into the tank. So there's some benefits all around, as well as a place to put in usually a lot more filter media than you can in canister filters, hang on backs, internal filters, and all that kind of thing. On this tank, I must admit, the main thing was keeping stuff out of the aquarium, because you want the aquarium to be the things that you want to look at. So your fish, your plants, your decorations, all that kind of stuff and I can just throw everything in here and forget about it. The fact that this is such a large tank is I can put a load of extra stuff down in the sump as well. So when you think about sumps, there's three main components of the sump, if you like. There's the overflow system, there's the, the sump itself and all the media in it, and then the return. Um, so the overflow on this system is, uh, they're called ultra reef overflows. Uh, and the idea here is that you maximise the space within the tank, but you, usually we'll see things like weirs, where you cordon off a little bit of the inside of the tank with some combs for the water to flow over there, or you have some other kind of overflow system with a box on the back. You'll hear weird and wonderful names like bean animals, um, all kinds of names, but they're just different ways of doing the overflow part of it. And all you're trying to do there is have something that can make it quiet, and make it so as you're not putting your room at risk by overflow. So what you don't want to happen is if there's a power cut or some kind of failure, that the water from this tank tries to drain into that tank and then you lose everything. So that's what you don't want. In this tank, I've got two overflows at the back here. It's not very well designed, this one, I must admit, when it was built. They should be at slightly different heights in this configuration. So I've had to kind of block off half of each to make it a full siphon. And what I'm trying to get going is a siphon from this tank into the sump down below, uh, which keeps it as quiet as possible because there's no gurgling and bubbling and things like that. Um, the, the one drawback of a sump is there's quite a lot of tinkering and fiddling to get it right, but usually once you get it right, you can forget it. Uh, and that certainly has been my experience as well. So I spent a few weeks tearing my hair out trying to get this ready, but now I think I'm some kind of expert in sumps, but I can, I can tinker and tailor and get it just running perfectly. It runs absolutely silent. I've done a video in the past um, looking at the noise level of sumps because there's a misconception that they're noisy. They shouldn't be. If they are, then something's wrong. Um, but that gets the water from here down there and then we run through a series of filter media. Media is just the things that the bacteria is going to live on and grow on. Runs through that media, um, goes to the end and gets pumped back in. So when you're pumping back in, all you're trying to do there is match the pump flow rate with the overflow rate to make sure that you've got that balanced. Um, and that's the bit that you can do, the, the initial setup and tinkering. And you might want to buy some extra valves and things like that to make sure you can set that properly. But let's have a look at that below deck bit a little bit more closely. Um, in this particular tank, I've got some, they're actually quick release doors, so I can just, with a couple of things, the door comes straight off and then we can have a look at it properly. So what we have here is the overflows are on this side of the tank. We've got the two over there, they come down here into these two pipes. Um, and these two pipes have one which is the primary, which is this one here, which has the valve on it. And this is the valve that I talked about earlier where we can do the fine tuning to make sure that this, the in and the out is balanced. And that's what helps keep it silent. That then drops into the initial first chamber and I have the pipes under the water line here. Again, another technique to keep it quiet. 
Uh, what you could do here would be use some filter socks and they are the, the first bit of filtration which take out any of the muck that's coming in through there. But in this particular sump, the way I have it is nothing in that very first chamber, a baffle here and then it goes straight into a pad of filter wool at the top. Uh, I use this stuff here which depending where I get it from, Wish, eBay, whatever it might be, just buy big rolls of it, cheapest chips. You can, people will talk about buying filter floss, uh, pillow, batting, matting, that kind of stuff. Just something that's fairly fine, that's going to catch all the first initial set of particles that come through. Um, that's the one thing that I change uh, weekly. The rest of this I don't touch. And the reason that I'm making this video now is because usually once a year, um, I like to give the whole sump a good complete clean out because some gunk does make it through and it does accumulate over the passage of time. But weekly, I will change this first initial uh, bit of filter floss, take it out, throw it away. Um, I have gone through the stuff where you can buy, you can give it a quick rinse and reuse it, but it's so cheap, you may as well just keep it and chuck it. So in this very first chamber, so the water's coming down here, back up, hitting the filter floss, and then it goes straight through a series of sponges. Um, these sponges, I did used to be quite particular about how I would order them, and I'd have, I tried it going from coarse sponge down to fine sponge. I tried it the other way around. If I'm completely honest, it didn't make that much of a difference. As long as I kept this filter floss on top, nothing really bad made it through that first one. And like I say, I only really I deal with this once a year, so I think that helps with the maintenance, if nothing else. Um, more of a big deal if you're using canister filters because I know you, they, they, they can clog up a lot easier. So like I say, I've got this layer of sponges down here which is your first layer of mechanical filtration and then it goes up into this second section. Um, and here I have another layer of sponges, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six sponges in this one where it comes back up and goes through them but I've orientated these um, vertically. And then after them, I've just got some spare media. Now in here is things like Biohome, things like Alpha Grog, ceramic rings, bio balls, just anything and everything that I've had lying around just because it's a really good um, place to keep extra media. And what I use these for is when I'm starting up a new tank, I can go in and grab one of these fully cycled media bags and pop it in whatever filter I want to use. And that gives me that instant cycle in the next tank I'm trying to set up. So what you might, find here is people might use this as some kind of refugium to grow plants um, in the marine world they'd have some kind of algae and things like that to keep it all down in the sump below but it's just a spare chamber in this particular setup so I use it like that. I did when I first set this up and I had uh, fish that were getting beat up a little bit I'd pop them in here if the, I could find the aggressor I'd pop them in there for a bit and give them a bit of time out which would give the fish upstairs a little bit more time to recover and then I could cycle them through but I don't really use it like that anymore. So what I've got here is mechanical, more mechanical, start the biological and then I've got another two sections here which is just more, this is my main biological sections and here I've got more bio home, um, I've got some bio bricks uh, I'll talk about these a little bit more later, but more biological filtration. And then I've got this last chamber here before the return pump. It's where I've got my CO2 injection going on in here. I've got the heaters in here. I've got some bubblers in here for some air stones. So well, I run CO2 during the day and then at night I turn on some air stones to give some extra aeration. And that happens in here. And then this final chamber is where I've got the return pump. So the return pump goes back up uh, and returns into the tank as you would expect the return pump to do but I've also got a t-piece on that return so as I can divert all the water this way and back and keep it cycling through here so if I want to take the top tank out of circulation for a while and work on that I can still keep the water going through the media and keep everything fresh and healthy and um, when I do a deep clean like this it kicks up a load of yuck and gunk and um, I don't want to necessarily spit all that straight back into the tank when I turn it on so at first I'll turn on that tea piece so as it filters the gunk out first and then turn it back into the tank so as I'm only putting the clean water back into the tank. So that's an overview pretty much of how it works. What I'm going to do now is just going to take all that out, put it into a bucket I prepared earlier. I'm going to give all my sponges a good wash, put them back in. I'm going to take out all my bio media, give that a good wash, put that back in. And then we should be good to go. I'll have to do a bit of a, a gravel vac, if you like, even though there's no gravel. But 
what tends to happen in this setup is some mulm will accumulate down here and that's the bit that's needing most attention but the rest of the tank looks pretty clear and pretty good um, so let's get on with that the other thing I didn't talk about was obviously this tank here which is a separate tank uh, all on its own which is my auto top off reservoir and uh, my auto top off system is actually broken at the moment so I'm not actually using it but I will get back to that or replace it somehow um, but what that is is basically a reservoir for clean fresh water and I have a, a water level sensor in this chamber that when the water level drops through evaporation and things like that, it just tops it up, meaning that I don't have to keep coming in here every day or two um, to, to top it back up. Because what happens in a system like this is, in a normal aquarium, when the water level drops, you'll see that in the display tank and the water levels start coming down. Uh, but a sump, another of its benefits is that it always maintains that water level wherever you set it and the water level drops in the sump. And that can be bad if your pump can't handle it because you could end up running a pump dry. But in reality, what really happens is you end up running a pump noisily as it sucks in bits of air and that alerts you that it needs topping up. But because this is a discus tank, I'm doing so many water changes on it anyway, it doesn't really get a chance to evaporate. So it's no big deal if I've not got my auto top off running. But if you're not going to do water changes just as often, then it might be something you want to consider. Um, other things that I've got going on down here is I've got my plugs and everything at the back of the um, the back of the cabinet here. Uh, I've got a temperature sensor and temperature controller here, and all the wires and all the pipe work and all that is hidden down here. So all here is just up here and lovely. But this this is the, the yucky bit that you don't want people to see. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's get on with that cleaning and we'll get everything out and rinsed. So I've just started pulling out all the sponges out of this first section and as you can see it's made the water go all gunky coloured. But something else that you notice when you first when you start doing this type of cleaning, I don't know if it'll work now. You see that? <laughs> There's some at least one coolie loach in there and one tetra. So I'll need to try and catch them. <laughs> so four cardinals and one coolie loach I found in this little section. I uh, got them all safely rescued and back into the main tank. But as you can see, that's where I've got all the gunk at the moment. So what I'm going to do is let that settle for five minutes, get to the bottom. And then one of the problems people have here is the sump tends to be on the ground. So it's really hard to start a siphon out of here. So I'm going to get my secret weapon, which is a drill pump. Uh, which will grab all that gunk, pump it straight out into the drain outside and hopefully not put too much stuff into the rest of the system because as you can see the water in this side is still quite clear and that's one of the good things about these baffles so you can see them a little bit better here the water flow is forced to go in this direction up and down, up and down uh, the benefit of that is really for oxygenation because it gets the water moving and it also pushes the water through certain paths otherwise the water would just flow and skim right over the top you'd have a load of stagnant water down below so having these baffles in place in a marine tank you would call them bubble traps more than anything else because it gets rid of the bubbles um, but here it's more to aid the, the oxygenation of the water because it gets them moving and flowing in little waterfalls and cascades but it also makes sure that the water is moving around within your filter media so go and get the drill pump we'll let this settle and then we'll get that pumped out so giving it a final check make sure there's no stranded fish in there and um, it all seems well this down here is my drill pump so what it is is you attach your drill to this bit spins round suck water out one end pushes out another so i've got this end of the hose is going outside into the drain and this is the end that i'll use as a, a siphon essentially to suck up all the gunk and then i just attach my drill to that and a couple of minutes later we're done helps if you put it in the right direction. So they've got all the sludge out of that compartment now. Um, that drill pump works really well. I've taken all the sponges out there in my bucket here. So that just needs swilling round. 
Um, same as you would with a canister filter, sponges. Um, swirl them round with either old tank water or fresh water, not tap water because that might kill your beneficial bacteria. Um, get them back in. Now just take out each of these bags, do the same sort of thing, and we should be good to go. Okay, we've got all our sponges back in, um, all rinsed out. We've got some nice murky water, which is just lovely. Um, now, that's the mechanical filtration done. We're going to go on to the biological filtration next. And again, this is one of the beauties of sumps is you've really got enough space to do whatever the hell you want in there. Um, the amount of media I can cram in here, it doesn't really need to be that efficient. Now, I do have Biohome in here, which I think is a really great media, even if you don't not interested in the nitrate reduction element of it. It's a very good porous media, great for housing loads of bacteria. But I could use something that isn't that efficient, pot scrubbers, all, all the, the cheap stuff. So I have got Bioballs, Alpha Grog, various other things in here, but I've got lots of Biohome, so I might as well use it. And I am seeing some effect on the nitrate, so why not? I've also got these, which I kind of forgot I had in there until someone else mentioned them. These are the Bio Bricks. Um, I think you can still get them on the website. They're kind of similar to the same idea as the Marine Pure bricks, although a lot, lot cheaper. Um, full disclosure, I was given these just to try out. Now, again, they're mostly for salt water. As you can see, these little holes, these are frag racks, essentially. So you can put them in your sump and hold your frags and get some filtration going on as well. Um, but might as well use them. So I'll stick them in. I've got a couple of these. I mean, I can't say how well or not well they are, but they seem to work. And there's no outlandish claims like some of the other ones make where they'll say, oh yeah, one brick will um, handle 5,000 gallons of water or anything like that. So I'm just going to stick these down at the bottom and then start piling up all the other. He says, if I can manage not to break anything. And then I've got all these other bags full of, so that one, for instance, is Alpha Grog. Got bio home in this one. Just going to give them a quick swill in this water, rinse it all out, get any gunk that's on them off, and then pop them back in as well. And then I've got my other biological media up here to get through, and we're pretty much done. So I'll come back in a minute. So there we go. I've just switched it back on. So I've run it in a loop for five minutes to get rid of the majority of the dust and gunk that got kicked up, and then I've switched the. Um, the valve here off so as it starts returning to the tank so now it's doing this so it's literally just started getting to the the fill level here and you can see it's clouded up the water a little bit but nothing too bad but if i take my microphone off here that is the loudest you should be able to hear a sump and that's literally when it just starts priming itself almost and that's all the pipes filling up After a couple of minutes, that will go away. The other thing I didn't talk about was in that final section where we have my return pump. Um, so you can see the controller on the door there. It's a Jabo. Jabo. I'll put links to all the bits of various bits of equipment that I use in the description. Um, but it's a DC pump. I think it's a 10,000 litre per hour or 8,000 litre per hour. Um, but it's a variable pump that you can, can control the speed of it. Uh, and um, when I mentioned earlier the balance, I'm trying to get the balance right. That's another useful tip is to get that because if you spend a little bit more on your pump, and you can see this one here, I'm not actually running it at full whack here. It's turned down to about maybe 60 or 70 percent. Um, that just prolongs the life of the pump as well. So while it might be a little bit more expensive, you're not running it at full steam. It's going to last you a lot longer. And these pumps, I can't recommend them enough. This is so much quieter than my last pump. There was a visible hum, a visible, audible hum even, uh, with my last pump. And this one just doesn't have any of that at all. So quiet. So you'll hear some noises now. That's because mostly I'm, I'm still filling up from that little hose there. But if I turn that off, in fact, let me just do that. Turn that off, and now everything's pretty much there. There's still the odd little gurgle, but that'll go in a couple of minutes. But I'll put the mic down here again, you can see that it is really quite quiet.
the tiniest hum that you can hear is actually my CO2 reactor which is in this chamber here because it's got quite a bit of a, a noisy pump so I need to change that out but the rest of it, good to go so another thing to notice here is you can see where the water level is so this is the sump running now so what you'll notice here is the water line here of the various chambers in the sump still leaves a load of headroom in the actual sump what that's all about is letting you choose the water level up in the display tank up here um, allowing for a power cut so as if the water did drain from the top you've still got plenty of headroom for the sump to contain it and it doesn't end up on your floor and then conversely if for instance something blocked up in the overflows this is the amount of uh, water that this pump can actually pump into the tank so you've got enough headroom in the tank as well to make sure that you don't get any flood that way and then the pump obviously should turn off so that's a good tip to make sure you get the pump that will turn off if it detects it's running dry so this chamber is the maximum amount that it can pump back in without flow coming down and moving the water through so that's it, all back to silent running, nice clean water um, usually when I do any kind of maintenance it makes the tank go a little bit cloudy so it's not quite as see through as I would like it but it will get there in a couple of hours um, if you like this kind of stuff please click that subscribe button and um, there's lots more of that also there's some links in the description you can follow me on all the social medias I'm trying to post every day on uh, Instagram with some pictures of this tank and all the other ones downstairs and there's also the join button if you fancy that and um, you'll not if you already joined you would know that I've done this because I've already posted there to the members to give them a shot of me knee deep or elbow deep in this um, but otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time. So if you've got any questions at all about sumps, by all means get in touch on any of the social media sites. You can join my Facebook group, you can message me here, you can message me on Instagram or Facebook. Um, I'll help you if I can. I'm not an expert, but I've done a lot of playing around with this sump and to get it going. So I know a lot of things about it. Um, but yeah, if you like this kind of stuff, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.